Welcome to Living Hope. And in today's message, ears to hear, Pastor Aaron teaches that we can hear God's voice by listening to his word. Did you know that you can hear the voice of God today? You know, we have all kinds of examples of scripture of people who heard the voice of God and we could talk about them, but I'm talking about you. You can hear the voice of God today. So many people go through their entire lives never knowing that they can hear the voice of God. But you need ears to hear the voice of God. How? How do we have ears to hear? And that's what we're going to talk about here today in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, is where we're going to be hanging out today. So if you have your Bibles, if you're watching online, you have your Bible, open that up to Mark, chapter 4. And uh, while you're opening there and thinking about that, I just want to give a summary of where we're at in the Gospel of Mark here, because it's important to know in the context of the Scripture what we're reading and what we're looking at. And so Mark, chapters 1 through 3, is really the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He was baptized to start his ministry by John the baptizer. And then he began healing and casting out evil and calling his disciples and hanging out with sinners. And all of these things provoked the religious leaders. And Jesus began to make a lot of enemies already this early part of his ministry. And his popularity increased as people came to him for various reasons, came to be healed or to witness his greatness or whatever else they could get from him. Now, Jesus begins to shift his ministry focus from the crowd to the 12. He will teach the crowds, but he's going to explain only to those closest to him what he is really saying. And that's where we, what we see here in Mark chapter 4. We're going to pick up here at verse 3. Jesus has pushed away on a little boat out on the side of the seashore, and he's teaching to this big crowd that is gathered on the, sea, the side of the sea there. And he says in verse 3, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell onto good soil." And produce grain, growing up and increasing and yielding 30-fold and 60-fold and a hundred-fold. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the word of God. So as a way to help people hear the teaching here in, a moment, in, this, in this moment, Jesus pushes off of the shore on this boat and teaches the people so they could see and hear him. You know, we're fortunate today to have sound amplification and video teaching so the Word of God can hear, be heard, and spread throughout the world. One of the reasons that uh, a guy named Billy Graham was so popular back in the last century was because it was the perfect storm of sound amplification and radio and TV all coming together. And it was estimated that Billy Graham preached to 2.2 billion people across the world. He preached to more people than anyone ever in Christian history. And then before amplification, buildings were built to carry voices. A guy named Charles Spurgeon in, um, in 19th century England preached to about 10,000 people per week, and they stood in the room shoulder to shoulder to hear him preach in this big giant building in the metropolitan tabernacle. Jesus sits on a boat <laughs> or on the side of a mountain to teach the crowds. And the text says that a very large crowd had gathered to hear. And we see that he taught in parables. Parables. What are parables exactly? Well, parables give us insight into the kingdom of God that has come near. They could be provocative. They could be surprising. They make us think about everyday objects and events, and they are designed to give spiritual truth. In fact, 35% of Jesus' teachings in the Gospels were by parables. 
usually they have about one, they usually have one main point with many implications from that main point. And he began by saying in this parable, listen, or behold. And he ended it by saying, whoever has ears to hear. So I wonder, can you hear me today? Can you hear me today? Can you hear me today? And I mean, really hear me today. Do we have spiritual ears to hear spiritual truth today? Jesus is showing us a connection between the heart and ears. It takes a spiritually alert heart and mind to digest these truths. So here in the parable of the soils, seed is spread everywhere. And growth of that seed depended on what soil it lands on. And there's four types of soils. We have the path, which is really not soil at all because there's nowhere for the seed to go. It gets trampled underfoot. We have the rocky soil. We have soil with thorns and we have the good soil, the fertile soil. So just pausing for a moment before we get into the details of this, let's pull back and see what do we take from this by itself as it sits right now, this kind of overview I think we see that the kingdom of God will break into this world like a farmer sowing seed. It will receive different responses, but eventually we will see and experience a great harvest. And the message to the believer is clear. If you are a believer in Christ here today, you're a believer watching online today, the message is clear. We must sow the seed of the gospel. And we must do so generously so people can hear and respond. How the people respond is not really up to us, is it? Right? God is responsible for the harvest. And we know this because 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul says that God gives the growth when a seed is planted and watered. We can only plant and water, but God gives the growth. That's true when we water and plant in our gardens too and on the farmlands too, isn't it? But what is Jesus really saying here? Well, let's look at chapter four, verse 13. They asked him, what is this about? And he says, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all of the parables? The sower sows the word and these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on the rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy, and they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful. But those who were sown on the ground on the good soil were the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30 fold, 60 fold and a hundred fold. So Jesus begins this section here by saying, guys, why are you having a hard time understanding this? You know, sometimes teachers get frustrated. I don't know if you've ever been a teacher or taught kids in a classroom, or maybe you've taught a Bible study and you're just like, why aren't you understanding this? This is Jesus kind of a little bit frustrated in this moment. And he says, why is this hard for you to understand? Let me explain it to you guys. Thank you for doing that. He says, or we, we say to him, thank you for doing that, right? And he says, a sower sows the word. All right, so we understand that the seed is the word of God, all right? And then we have four different soils and the parables explained. There's the soil of the hard heart. This is the, this is the tough-minded individual, the one who's resistant to the word and therefore is unresponsive. For whatever reason, they are hardened to the gospel message. And if today's message is called ears to hear, these are the people who are deaf. They don't have spiritual ears to hear and they lack careful consideration. And Satan comes and snatches it away and he says, immediately, Satan snatches it away. The second is the soil of the shallow heart. The shallow heart is welcoming, but it does not sustain growth. 
We see this in churches all the time. When people come in and they dive in to serve and, and they grow even for a little bit, but very soon they are gone. Why? Because it got hard. Because this, what we do is not easy. It's not easy to try to uh, be shaped and molded into the image of Christ. And so people begin to call out sin or tell you you need to grow in this area and maybe they, they need to receive some accountability themselves and they just start to get resistant and they fall away and get choked out. The third is the soil of the distracted heart. They're caught up in worldly wealth and worry. There's only partial commitment, which is really none at all, by the way, because John 8, 31 says that those who continue in the word Prove to be disciples. The distracted hearts show themselves to be false disciples. There's no real surrender to Jesus. There's just lust for the things of the world, not real life change. And they fall away. The fourth, that's us. The fourth is the good soil, right? We're the good soil that receives the word. If you're watching today, are you the good soil today? Because the soil, the good soil is the soil of the fruitful heart. Those who hear the word, accept it and grow and bear fruit. Persecution and tough times may come your way, but they don't deter you from Christ. Worries and wealth and cravings of the world are really no distraction for the good soil heart. Because hearing the word is an active pursuit. Hearing is active, it's not passive. We are to be people who aggressively pursue the word of God and allow it to take root and enjoy the growth that he gives. And note the promise to receiving the word of God. The promise is that it will grow and produce fruit. Failure to do so proves that the word may have fallen on different soil. So how's the soil of your heart today? There's no such thing as a fruitless Christian. It may reveal the lack of connection to the power of God through faith in his word. So what soil is the soil of your heart today? And if you feel like, I don't even know, I may be the path today, I want you to know that that soil can be watered and tilled back up. You could do that through prayer and being in his word. But what in the world does all of this have to do with hearing God's voice? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because <laughs> I want to talk about that. And I, th I would start by saying, what else do we know about God's word? What does the word tell us about God's word? Well, Isaiah 40 tells us that the word of God endures forever. Psalm 119 verse 11 says that we should hide it in our hearts so that we might not sin against God. Deuteronomy 6 says that we should teach it to our children and put it on our doorposts. It should be what we are all about in our lives. Hebrews 4 says it's sharper than any two-edged sword and it cuts to the heart. 2 Timothy 3.16 says that it is God-breathed. The word of God is God-breathed, profitable for teaching, rebuke, and correction, and training. This scripture that we have before us is powerful. Possibly most importantly, if not most importantly for today, John chapter one says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. All things were created through him. Life was in him and darkness could not overcome him. In verse 14 in chapter one and the gospel of John says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Church, if you're watching online today, listen. The word of God is a person and his name is Jesus. So if you want to hear God's voice today, listen to Jesus. The gospels show us the teachings of Jesus and the rest of the New Testament explains what those truths look like in our own lives and in our churches. And we have it right before us here in the Bible. 
If you hear the word and you welcome him, you will produce fruit, fruit of righteousness, of healing, of grace, of forgiveness, of peace and love and joy and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. You will produce this kind of fruit because the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of those who hear, believe, and do the Word of God. So we respond in faith to the Word of God with ears that hear. And our faith is a faith that is heard, it's proclaimed, it's preached out loud. It doesn't have to be up in a pulpit. It can be in your living room with your kids by the bedside. It could be out in the fields. It could be out in the marketplace. It could be out in the shopping malls. It could be wherever you go. The word of God being proclaimed on your lips, the gospel spreading because of you. So how are your spiritual ears today? And is it clear enough? Is it loud enough? Is it piercing enough for you to hear this word? Or are you one that maybe tunes out the words of scripture? Maybe revealing the poor soil of your heart? I hope not. Because what we've experienced here today is dangerous. I want you to see that, okay? What we've experienced here today is dangerous. We've heard the word of God. And now it's up to us to respond. There's something that you have to do as a response to the word today. It may be something big. It may be something small. I don't know. The Spirit's going to have to teach you through that. But what you do is critical for your own soul and it's critical for the growth of the kingdom. Because God has left that up to us by the power of his Spirit. He works through us, through his people, to multiply the gospel. And you have a part in that, in advancing the kingdom. Your gifts, your talent, your treasure. We bear fruit because good fruit produces good seed. Good seed is planted and it produces more good fruit. And we call this multiplication. And it's all for his good and his glory. And this only begins with belief in Christ. It begins with belief that he is God's word. And he was, in the beginning, was the word. And he begins today by calling you to believe in him as Savior and as Lord. Turn from your sin. Turn to him. Repent. Believe in Christ. Be baptized. Begin your faith journey today. And this is our hope for you as a follower of Jesus that we would sow generously the word of God, the gospel, the truth that is Christ died for you so that you might have a reconciled relationship with the Father again, that you might believe upon him and have eternal life and life abundant here and now today, and that you would sow that gospel generously into our communities and into the places in your life and nurture the new growth that comes and see that growth multiplied. So church, it's time to start producing fruit. If you're a Christian today watching, it's time for you to start producing fruit. It's time to grow. And it begins with our ears that hear the word of God. So feast on the bread of the word. Grab onto it. Don't let it go. Read your Bible today. Pray with someone. Hear the voice of God. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, you are good, you are gracious, you are kind, that you would give us this word and allow us to be the vessels you use to multiply it. What a joy that is. Let us not hold on to it till the fruit dies. Let us bear fruit and spread the gospel among our communities and our neighborhoods, our homes, in places we work and play, where we're trusting you with the growth. As we pursue you through the spiritual disciplines and as we share this gospel with others, might you grow and multiply it in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you.
If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.